So this podcast episode is for you social impact leaders who are sales navigator curious. Maybe you've done the free trial, you opened it up and thought, okay, what am I supposed to do in here? I get it. So here is a replay from my recent LinkedIn Live sharing three specific case uses for sales navigator for nonprofits. And you might be thinking, sales navigator in this economy? Well, guess what? Eligible nonprofits get 75% off sales nav. So if that describes you, check out the link in the show notes to start your application process. And if you prefer to just watch the replay of this live on LinkedIn itself so that you can leave a question or a comment or see what other people have said, I will drop the link to that in the show notes as well. Hey, I'm Tanya Bhattacharya, and you are listening to the Campfire Circle podcast. We are all about breaking down the boardroom table as the ultimate space of leadership and instead replacing it with a campfire because that's where we share our stories. That's where we build warm community. And that is where there's always room. I'm building an impactful business in public through thought leadership, and I'm taking you behind the scenes all along the way. So if you want to stand out as you stand up for your mission, you are in the right place. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm just laughing because that countdown video is a little more dramatic than I thought it would be. Hi, welcome to this LinkedIn Live all about Sales Navigator. And I am so excited for this because this is really geared towards folks like us who are in the business of creating change through relationships, right? Isn't that what we do as nonprofits? I am really excited to share these nuggets with all of you. But as we get started, as folks start entering in, I would love to hear from all of you. What is your work in the world? What is the change that you are trying to make? What is the mission that you work on? Tell us about your organization. Tell us about the work that you do. Just drop it as a comment here in the LinkedIn Live. And you never know, right? Because speaking of relationships, you never know who is here in a digital room with you. Maybe it's somebody who's working on a similar mission. Maybe it's somebody who has a deep passion for the work that you do or lived experience in the work that you do. And that's the power of LinkedIn, right? It's all about connection. It's all about relationship. So share in the comments, what is the work that you do in the world? So this LinkedIn Live is hopefully going to give you some ideas for how to use Sales Navigator to reach out to your larger community ecosystem in a more tailored way, a more fulsome way to create conversations. And I am doing this live in collaboration with Percent, which is a global verification company that works with LinkedIn to verify nonprofits as they apply for LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And I want to say before we get started that eligible nonprofits get 75% off of Sales Nav, which is obviously a wonderful kind of a discount. So I'd encourage you to check out that link in the description for this live to begin that process. It's a bit.ly link. And again, you'll get verified by percent. And Jake Berquist and his team are actually here in the audience today, including Abby Irwin, who's a dedicated person who sits between percent and LinkedIn to support nonprofits and just help them get started with the verification process and more because sometimes getting started is the hardest part. So, and finally, we will have some dedicated time for Q&A at the end, but definitely as I share the stuff, just add your question as a comment here so I can see it. And if we don't get to your question during this 30 minute live, I will go back afterwards and just type a little answer. So no worries about that. It could be a technical question. It could be a question related to the application. And if so, probably our friends at Percent will chime in on that question. If it's something more strategic or about what I'm sharing, I will probably be answering those. So I want to say hi to a couple of folks who are here with us. Hi, Catherine. It's so good to see you. And thank you for the work that you do in the education space. That is so key. That is so important. For some reason, it says LinkedIn user. That's so funny, but hi, welcome. We love our fractional fundraisers. And let's see who else is here. Oh, Todd, my neighbor, my good friend, Todd from Catalyst, who's here not too far from me, working on early childhood development. And yeah, hey, Jake, good to see you. And as I mentioned, Jake is here with Percent and him and his team will be answering any questions around that verification process. All right, so let's get started. I think a good place to start, actually, let me, before I talk about what is SalesNav, let me tell you a little bit about why I'm so 
into LinkedIn. If you and I have been connected for some time, you probably know that I was a nonprofit fundraiser, executive director, many hats. I wore a lot of hats in the nonprofit space before starting my consulting firm. And the organization I worked for was a addiction treatment program that served women and their dependent children. And they had been around long before I joined the team in 2009. Actually, at this point, they're coming up on their 50th anniversary. So some of the things that I would do would be to go back in the room where all the paper files lived, all the paper files that predated our electronic records, and look up grants we used to get and funders and corporate sponsors that we had in literally the 70s and the 80s for our events. Or I would create lists of hospitals here in the Southern California area so that our team could nurture those relationships with their case managers. So our work was top of mind when they had somebody that would make sense to refer into care. Or once we did a building campaign and addiction is very much a stigmatized issue still, and it was even more so back then. And so we had to identify movers and shakers or influencers in our local business community who would be on our side when it came to fighting against the stigma in our community about growing our, our center in their backyard. And so I say all these things and give all these examples, and you probably have similar examples with slightly different nuances, but the common denominator between all of these things is building trust with the right people who have access to the right resources or reach to move our mission forward. But here's the thing. As a introverted INFJ, this classic way of going out into the community and meeting these folks at, let's say, a big chamber networking event or a big kind of like gala or something, these big places where people would come in, in droves, always felt a little uncomfy for me. Like I couldn't quite do it. I remember thinking it was really hard to go past just that surface level talk into the deep conversations that are required for relationship building. I didn't know if I was even talking to the right person in the organization. And even if I was, all I really knew about them was what was printed on their name tag, which wasn't a lot. And so I was really grateful to find LinkedIn as a strategic place to build relationships instead in a sort of thoughtful, methodical, and an informed way. And I was able to use it as a sort of 24-7 asynchronous event where the decision makers I wanted to reach were at and where they were accessible and where I could see so much information about them, right? From their volunteer experience to their interests, to their affiliations, right? Who they knew and who we had in common, right? So I could tailor my outreach and just engage in meaningful conversation from the beginning. And yes, I could do this from a starting place with just plain old normal LinkedIn, like the just LinkedIn, but Sales Navigator was a tool that really supercharged it for us. So let me take a second to just read the chat. Oh, yay, we've got another INFJ. We're rare. We're like only 3% of the population, but I find so many of us and we're pretty awesome. Hey, Rebecca, thanks for being here. I'm so glad you're here to learn more about LinkedIn for your nonprofit. And thank you for the work that you do. And I'm so glad Zach connected you with us. And there's so many great people here. Marissa's here. We've got Rena here. I hope I pronounced that correctly. But um, yeah, it's so good to see you all. Hey, Chris, good to see you. Chris, I knew Chris from back in my day when I worked for the nonprofit I mentioned. So very cool. All right, just wanted to say hi to everybody who's here. All right, so what is LinkedIn Sales Navigator? I think that would be a good place to start before we get into the nitty gritty. So it's a premium version of LinkedIn that's designed to help you engage with your people. And some people would say it's for sales professionals. But here's the thing about that. I think a lot of us are like, well, I'm not a sales professional, but, and I get it. I get it. Sales can be seen as a bad word, but I really believe that when we are doing our thing, us in the nonprofit world, when we're doing our thing, we're doing sales, right? Founders and EDs are casting a vision for a different world and converting people. I don't love that term, but maybe because it's a sales term, right? But that's what we're doing. Fundraisers, like many of us who are in the room, we get to know our potential donors' pain points and connect them to investment opportunities to light them up, to solve a problem they're passionate about. So let's agree to just accept it, at least for the purposes of this live. Those of us who are in the business of creating positive change have some elements of sales to our work. Okay, so what does SalesNav do or what does it help us do? 
So in our time together for the next 20 minutes or so, I want to really give you three strategic and specific use cases so that when you open up sales nav, you have some ideas on where to start. Because this is what I hear a lot from people. And this is what I experienced myself, actually, the first time I opened up sales nav. I know this is powerful, but I don't know what to do. So let's talk about it. Okay. And before I get into that, let me just check out the comments here. Okay. okay we've got a couple ENFPs. I love ENFPs too. Amazing. All right, cool. I could just read the chat all day. But what I'm going to do instead is talk about how LinkedIn Sales Navigator helps us build a map of relationships. It helps us build a map of relationships. So even when we are in relationship, deep relationship with a company or a, a funder, let's say a funder, managing the web of relationships in that organization can feel like a full-time job. So I'm going to share an example. So back in the day, the organization I worked for, we worked with a really incredible global corporation. And one of their main giving pillars was funding alcohol abuse prevention. They were an alcohol brand. They were uh, headquartered in Louisville, Kentucky. But they had offices all over the world. They had thousands of employees. And they had an office here in Southern California, in the neighboring city to where our nonprofit was at in, in Irvine. And I had one primary contact there who was like our go-to person. She was a local champion for us. She loved our work. She had a deep personal connection to it. She did so much for us. But I knew that it was the head of global corporate social responsibility who was the ultimate decision maker about where their dollars would go in any given year, including where more transformative, like multi-year grants would go. And that person was influenced by many other people, right? like their head of marketing, head of people and culture. And so I was tasked with trying to figure out how do I get an understanding of all of the different people that make up the web of this organization. And so LinkedIn Sales Nav offers a tool called relationship mapping. And so I just threw up on the screen an example of what this can look like. So building a map of the relationships for the corporations, the foundations, the referral programs, like the organizations that you're working with, this gives you a lot of intel. It helps inform your next steps, right? It helps you paint a picture of the networks within the organizations you work with. Because here's the thing, sometimes decision makers leave, people leave. My contact who was so instrumental, in our relationship could have left. And so using this tool, you're able to see updates. You're able to stay in relationship with folks as they move on to other organizations. You're able to see when the people at those organizations do cool things and end up in the news. Unless you have a Google alert set for every single organization you work with, you're just not always going to have your finger on the pulse on everything that they're doing. Or maybe they're not in the news, but they just posted a LinkedIn update about their staff retreat. They posted an update about their professional life. So this tool helps you just stay on top of what all of the different people within your important, LinkedIn sales now would call it accounts and sales terminology, we'd call it accounts, but what your people are doing, right? What your key funders and sponsors and organizations are up to, because we get busy. That's one thing I know for sure. Nonprofit leaders are very busy. And so this is a tool that prompts you so you can just reach out with personalized messages, a well-timed congrats when somebody's graduating with their master's, whatever. And that can open up all kinds of doors. All right. So I'm just going to take a look at the comments. Okay, cool. I just like to see what's going on there. All right. So what is next? What is another strategic use case that we can use LinkedIn sales now for? So you can add your current quote unquote book of business. I'm doing a lot of air quotes because these are like sales terminologies, but they are just we have them as well in the nonprofit world. So let me take it back again with an example from my own experience. So at the nonprofit organization I worked with, the addiction treatment program, we served quite a few women pilots, especially pilots who were moms, who had dependent children or they were moms. And so in case you're not aware or familiar, drinking has long been associated with aviation. And there are a lot of professionals who are dedicated to supporting pilots and aviation crews with their recovery from the FAA. They have a drug abatement division to airline pilots, labor unions, to EAPs at all the major airlines, like American Airlines and on. There are therapists and interventionists and treatment centers that specialize in supporting aviation professionals. 
And so what we did is upload our existing book of business as it related to our aviation accounts into Sales Navigator. And again, this is just my example for you. I would just think about lists of people that you are actively working with to support the mission of your organization. So for you, it might be your current list of corporate sponsors. It might be your current list of major gift donors. It might be people who refer clients to your educational nonprofit. Maybe it's a list of all of the alumni who are giving to your school. These are just some examples. I want you to think about who are in your book. And there you have probably many different types of people in your books of business. You can segment that out. But yeah, it's a specific list of people who support your mission in some way. And so when you upload that book of business into sales nav, you get visibility into what's actually happening with those key people in real time. So I talked a little bit about how you can do that within an organization. You can also do that for your entire sort of the people who are important to you. And you might be saying, well, I already have a CRM. I'm already keeping track of stuff in my CRM. Why would I add my CRM to to LinkedIn? Well, it's valuable to bring them over here to LinkedIn because again, in Sales Navigator, you'll get insights on things like when they post, it will flag little details and nuances. If you two went to the same school or volunteered for the same organization, you get notified when your people post on LinkedIn. So you can reach out and communicate in a more informed way. It cuts out a lot of that manual research that we've had to do when we're cultivating and stewarding our people, it just does it for you, right? It just does it for you. And another piece is SalesNav actually offers CRM sync with certain platforms so they can talk to each other. I do want to be super candid here because as I mentioned in the beginning of this talk, eligible nonprofits get 75% off of core sales navigator. And what I'm talking about is an add-on. It's a little bit of a more premium level of LinkedIn sales nav this CRM sync specifically. But to be honest, I think all of us have dealt with the absolute annoyance at best and just like the utter despair at worst of an out-of-date CRM and just sending stuff to people who aren't there anymore. So when you integrate your CRM with SalesNav, they can start to talk to each other. So you can add new contacts to your CRM directly from LinkedIn SalesNav. And then you can also keep your CRM contacts up to date using a tool called data validation. So that might be enough. I don't know, but that might be enough to warrant using SalesNav just on its own. I should say that right now, I believe it's only integrated with three CRMs. It's integrated with Salesforce, which is what we used at the organization I worked for. So yay for us. Microsoft Dynamics and HubSpot. So I know a lot of folks here probably use Razor's Edge or Bloomerang, or there's so many great CRMs. But if you want this tool, Let the folks at Percent know. They are very happy to chat with you, have a conversation about integrating tech and apps across your organization as it relates to LinkedIn. Okay, I'm gonna just check up the comments. Nancy asks us if it's a complicated setup. That's a good question. I think everything is complicated for me. Like tech is not my thing, but I will echo that for those of us who are working with Percent on the verification process, like Abby and Jake and someone from their team will hop on and help you get through it. Honest answer, it would probably be complicated for me, but the folks at Percent can help you out. Let's see what else is going on. Okay, so let me actually share the third piece here. The third strategic case use, right? So we have now talked about how to use it to map the decision makers within one organization, whether it's a foundation, a corporation, an org. We've talked about adding your current book of business there so that you can keep track of what's going on with your key accounts in a more effective, streamlined way. And the third thing I want to talk about is that you can use SalesNav to find new values aligned partners. This is really important. So what does this mean? You can search for prospective donors, volunteers, board members, alumni, if you work for a university, or even if you work for a large nonprofit. I actually had a conversation with somebody who works for United Way, right? For United Way of California. And they were interested in connecting with all of the alumni that have ever worked for United Way. And so similarly, even if you don't have alumni that have graduated your program, you have alumni of your nonprofit. And so you can use LinkedIn to find those people and stay in touch with those previous employees. But anyway, those are some examples. So I want you to think of some keywords that have to do with your mission. So in my example, 
It would be things like addiction recovery. It would be things like women's mental health. It would be like long-term recovery. These certain keywords that are signals that these folks are somewhat interested in the work that I did at the organization. Think about keywords that might show up on someone's LinkedIn profile, maybe in their experience section, maybe in their previous volunteer experience section, right? And so use those keywords as a place to start with your searches, and then you can filter it down based on specific criteria, whether it's folks who are interested in mental health who have the title of CEO, or people who are interested in mental health who work in a specific industry. And again, yes, you can do this on just normal LinkedIn, just plain free LinkedIn. But the thing about SalesNav is that you get access to more filters. You get access to more ways to divvy up that data so that you can get even more specific and relevant. So LinkedIn basic search, like free LinkedIn, has 18 filters that you can choose from. But LinkedIn sales nav has 36 filters you can choose from. Things like company headcount, things like where their company headquarters is both of which would be really important for nonprofits that have a corporate giving strategy. You can filter it down by what LinkedIn groups they're in, which can tell you a lot about someone's interests or their values. You can filter it down by buyer intent, which I think is really key because it pulls data. Let's say I searched for addiction treatment. It would pull data to find people who maybe already follow the nonprofit that I work for, or maybe people who viewed the profile recently. So it just takes the basic search feature and gives you a lot more tools to customize your searches more specifically. So I'm going to throw something up here. This is a screenshot that I took yesterday and I tested it. So I added women, I added mental health, and I know you, it's probably a little hard to see this right now. It's a little small. So I'll just tell you what it says. I filtered it down by people who are interested in mental health. The women part, I think I probably would actually, thinking back on this, I'd probably remove this because that doesn't tell us too much, but mental health for sure. And then I filtered it down by people who work in the airlines and aviation industry, because this is a direct relation to the example that I shared earlier. And then something that LinkedIn sales nav allows you to do that I didn't even mention is you can actually exclude folks based on filters, which is something you cannot do in the free version. So for example, I knew that uh, I wanted to connect with people that were passionate about mental health in the airlines or aviation industry, but I probably wasn't going to be working with folks in engineering or IT or accounting. I was probably going to be working with folks more in like HR or folks in the C-suite. And so I excluded people from those functions. I excluded entry-level managers. And what I could do, this is a screenshot, so I can't do it in real time, but I could add folks who have seniority level of, let's say, CEO. I could add folks who are in the function of, let's say, HR. And so this will start to give me really good lists of people that I don't even know, but they are all people who likely would have been able to support us in our mission of supporting women who were struggling with addiction and who were in the aviation industry, who are pilots, things like that. So you can see here, I got 400 results from that. That's out of the 1 billion people that are on LinkedIn. So this is already a pretty specific search, but then I can just keep filtering it down. Another thing I can do with SalesNav is I can save this search, which is really great. I don't have to create it every single time. You're going to find really specific searches that are just like really keyed in and dialed in to what you're trying to do and what you're trying to find. So you can save those searches. And lastly, the thing that you can do is you can go through these people. You can look at their profiles and be like, yes, this person is a women's advocate at WestJet. I've got to know this person. And select them and add them to a list, right? You can add them to a list. You can call that list whatever you want to call it. But over time, you can visit that list and see what these folks are up to. You can find the right time to reach out to them. Yeah, all of that kind of good stuff. Oh, and one thing that I should also mention that I forgot is that with SalesNav, you have in-mails, right? That's part of what you get with your LinkedIn SalesNav. You get 50 in-mails a month. And an in-mail is a message, like a DM that you can send to anybody, even if you're not connected to them yet. And what I found from my own experience, I was always amazed by who would reach back out to me on LinkedIn, who completely just ignored my email or I could never get through via a phone call because folks are so gatekept, right? Folks are gatekept by executive assistants whose job it is to do that. And so yet these same people often respond on LinkedIn because they still manage their own LinkedIn account. And so 
emails are are key. I will be candid. It might take weeks or even months to sometime hear back, but that's okay because relationship building is a long-term activity. So in the couple minutes we have remaining, I would be happy to answer some questions. But as I wait for questions to go in, if you want to put some questions in the chat, I would love to answer them. But as we do that, I do also just want to mention and shout out percent. I can see that Hannah, Abby, and Jake are here in the chat talking to folks, which I'm so happy about. Again, percent is a global verification company and they work with LinkedIn so that when you apply for LinkedIn sales now for your 75% off, they are going to be the ones looking at that application. So I encourage you to check out that bit.ly link in the description for this live. Actually, I think I might be able to put it up here. Of course, it's not clickable, which is annoying, but that's okay. You can go ahead and click on that in the description of this live as well. And you can begin that process. It's a pretty painless process and their team is here to help you out as well. All right, let me peruse the comments section. Okay, so Zach has a really great tip. He has a great tidbit. I used to hit the posted within last 30 days filter to message people who are more likely to be active and respond. Yes, I love that filter. I actually currently have a saved list of nonprofit CEOs who have posted within the last 30 days, just so that I can get a sense of what the vibes are. What are the trends? What are people talking about? What are people interested in? What are people nervous about? What are the articles that they're sharing? It just helps me keep my finger on the pulse versus just scrolling my normal feed where like anyone and everyone is hanging out. The people I went to high school with are in my feed, whereas this just helps you be a lot more targeted. And yes, I do love that filter. Let's see what else is going on here. I want to say hi to my hi Candace. I didn't say hi to you earlier. It's so good to see you. And Michelle is here. Hi, Michelle. So good to be with you. I hope that you share some of these tips with the nonprofits you work with. And let's see, I'll just wait a few more moments. But actually, one thing I can share is there's a question that comes up often for folks who are applying for their 75% off. And so if you currently have LinkedIn Sales Navigator as a nonprofit, if you paid for it, but you want to apply for your 75% discount, you totally can. What you have to do is cancel your sales nav account for now. Don't worry about it. Like it won't delete everything. Like you will still have access to sales nav until that month is over, but then it will allow you to immediately go in and apply for the 75% off thing. Otherwise you'll get a little error that the code doesn't work because you already have sales nav, right? So you can cancel it and then go back to the link and that should work for you. That application process should work for you. And you can go through the verification process. Thanks everybody. I'm so glad this was helpful info. I'm really glad to hear that. So I know sometimes it takes a little time for the info to sink in and percolate. So since we are at the 30 minutes, what I'm going to do is pause my mic, say goodbye to folks, but encourage you as questions keep coming up, as you think about using sales and Avenue, you're like, oh, I should have asked Tanya this come back to this LinkedIn Live and just leave us a comment. Leave us a comment. And I will be keeping my eyes on this. Jake and his team, Hannah, Abby, they'll be keeping their eyes on this. And we are happy to answer any questions you have about sales now. So keep coming back. Absolutely. Chris, thank you so much for being here. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Okay, so you've heard from us. Now I want to hear from you. Leaving a review helps us so much in growing our reach and supporting more folks with this podcast. And even better, I would love for you to send me a note on LinkedIn with your takeaways from this episode. I cherish and respond to every message, so I can't wait to hear from you. And if you want to go even deeper, check out the show notes to take your next step.